Are you guys seeing this back and forth? Big John McCarthy finally had to weigh in. All right, hold the thought. Let me back up. Bobby Green versus Fazayev. Bobby Green loses the fight. Now, I will share with you just in a personal opinion, it was one of the great fights. It was the great fight of the night, which it was recognized, but it was just one of the great fights. I would have to imagine when the World MMA Awards come up at the end of the year, this is going to be in the voting for the best fight of all 2021. So, compliment to both guys. And I will share with you, I didn't know who was winning the fight. It seemed as though Fazayev was winning. That was what I thought my eyes were telling me. It was a close fight. And it's not as simple as getting done with a fight and then going to look at those numbers, right? I always see somebody that does that. I call it CompuBox, but that's not what it's called in MMA. CompuBox is like an actual company and works directly for Showtime and puts out boxing stats. I call it CompuBox. So when the fight stats, when the CompuBox comes out, they show you the numbers, but those numbers are very deceptive and they're, they're, they're not even really worth referencing. They're really not. They're a talking point because rule number one within the unified rules for judging criteria is damage. So you take an example like Mike Tyson, where Mike never touched the other guy more than he got touched, but he did significant damage with the few shots that he landed. That would be the great reference because I know that will stand out with you. You fight like Mayweather, you gotta touch a guy a whole bunch of times. You fight like Tyson, you've only gotta touch him a couple of times. So that's where those numbers, after the fact, can be deceptive. And that's where it comes to the judge to decide, to judge who did more damage, regardless of who touched the target more times. It's a significant, it's very important you understand that because that is a significant distinction between amateur and professional. If you were to take amateur boxing, by example, which we just saw over the last couple of weeks in the form of the Olympic Games, that is absolutely who touches who more, what part of the hand they touch them with in relation to what part of the body. That's amateur rules. Professional rules go once again by damage. So I didn't know who was winning the fight. I just did not know. It was an awesome fight. Bobby Green is so fun to watch and Fazayev's doing his part. Fazayev is standing his ground. He's not backing up. Nobody's throwing one punch at a time. Everything's in combinations, punches and bunches. Guys were, defense was on point too. You want to go look at stat after the fight. Don't go look at how many punches Fazayev landed or Bobby Green landed. Look at how many Fazayev slipped and how many Bobby Green slipped. These guys' defense was perfect. Great at least, great at least. I can't say perfect. Okay, fight comes to an end. There was only one clear round. There was only one round where you could watch it and you don't have to have a discussion on who won it. It was the third round and it was clearly Bobby Green. So when the judge's decisions get rendered and enunciated by Bruce Buffer, there is a 30-27 round. So before you get the conclusion, before you get revealed the winner, you get the score of which you hear at 30-27, you know for sure Bobby Green won the third round, you jump to the conclusion Bobby Green won the fight, of which is not going to get a standing boo. There'll be plenty of people who disagreed, but more people will be like me and go, man, that was a really close fight, which it was. You then get the big reveal that Fazayev won the fight. So, well, wait a second, 30-27, that would mean Fazayev won all three rounds, which would mean he won the third round, which simply did not happen. Here's where the controversy comes. Now, how do you handle those things? And Big John even referenced this at one point in his rebuke to the, to, to the official, to the judge. And Big John said, first and in this order, don't speak up at all. But secondly, if you are going to speak up and you were wrong, say that. Say, I got that one wrong. Okay, really good advice. I would also co-sign what John just said in that specific order. And let's revisit number one, which is say nothing at all. You have to be very, very good at what you do from an administrative standpoint. If you're on that side of the sport, you're with the commission, you're with the administrators. You have to be very, very good at what you do so that when and if you speak, you don't make things worse. Mark Twain's old expression, but it, it, it's very true. 
When you're in a hole, quit digging. I haven't seen very many officials navigate this correctly. There's one Mark Goddard. Mark Goddard will call it as straight as it can be called. And then when he talks about it after the fact, he will talk about it as straight and plainly as I am to you right now. But there's not a lot of other officials that can do that because they're generally looking to defend themselves. Mark Goddard's a master of it who never steps on a landmine because he talks plainly. I bring that to you because generally we don't hear from officials. It would be very nice if we did. We would learn something as a community or as pundits that are sitting back and attempting to judge the judges, which is just what a fan does, that's okay. We would learn something if we could have more of a dialogue, if we could have a back and forth with some of the administrators to hear what it is they are looking for or how they came to a conclusion that they came to. And the number one thing you want as a fan, aside from obviously the rules being followed accurately, but you want a consistency. If a guy is consistently bad or he is consistently good or he consistently sees it the way that you see it, it's helpful. But we can't have this dialogue that I'm discussing with you because it seems the administrators are not trained with PR or any level of being objective, only in that they want to defend themselves and what they did, even if they're wrong. And you have to understand, if you're the judge, okay, J.J. Ferraro was his name, local guy from Texas. He's not going to get any assignments or be judging anywhere unless it's Texas. I only bring that before you think you have to go bring, bring out your, oh my gosh, let's bury J.J. No, we don't. We don't have to bury J.J. He's, he's not going anywhere. If we go back to Texas, you might see him again. But what J.J. did that was a mistake is he addressed this publicly. He addressed the criticisms of him scoring the last round for Faziah. The reason that becomes an issue is there's three licensed judges. So for JJ to be right, the other two have to be wrong. And that seems to always be a stance that no official wants to take. Well, I'm not saying they're wrong. No, yes, you are. That's exactly what you're saying. It can be left or right. There's only two options. You went left, which means if anyone else went right, they did it wrong. But officials always lack the courage to come out and speak like this. And you can see where that'd be problematic. Now all of a sudden you're, you're, you're internal fighting as opposed to internally sharing opinions. And you see that when you share opinions and you form ideas, this is how you get something concrete achieved and changed over time. But we can't even get the first step done. So JJ comes out and he attempts to defend his position as to why Fazio beat Bobby Green in the third round. The problem that he had, and I'm talking about the judge, JJ here. The problem that he had is the criteria for which he stated as to why he gave Fazai of the round is not in line with the criteria set forth by the unified rules. Huge problem. Huge problem. As long as you're following the rules, you do get to then put your interpretation on them. That's true. That's where you could have a judge that went left and another judge that went right and the third judge that's going to split the difference between them, and there's our decision. You're open to your interpretation of the rules, but no referee gets to make up his own rules, and neither does a judge, which is where J.J. stepped in the landmine. He could have just laid out. He could have been quiet. And it wasn't the world's biggest deal in terms of shorting people who bet on the fight, just by example. Faziah won the fight all three Judges agreed on that. It was just how we want it and by what score. So we're not arguing over something that's terribly meaningful, at least not in comparative to how this could have been, which I think lends more to the idea as to why JJ probably should have kept it to himself. Because he is right to his interpretation. He did have the correct winner winning the fight. This wasn't as though he's stuck on an island and everything that he does is wrong. The problem is when he began to say why Fedzayev won the fight, he laid out a criteria that is not in line with the criteria that he was licensed and put into a position to carry out. And it's tough. As much as we can all tease JJ now because he gave us the grounds to do it, he absolutely opened the door and showed us his lack of understanding. 
There's another part of me that wants to thank him. In all fairness, I do have a side of me that would like to hear from the officials more often and not as a way to critique them, as a way to learn from them. What is it that you are looking for? We hear that damage is supposed to be number one. How do you define damage? That would be a fair question. Do I have to see damage? Does it have to be visible? Do I have to have blood? Do I have to have a broken nose? Do I have to have a swollen up ear? That would appear as damaging. What about a leg kick? What about shots to the leg that are thudding and painful, but I can't see the damage? I don't even see a discolorization. It's fair questions by me. I'm sure as I ask those rhetorical questions, you automatically have an answer. I, I got it. I do too. But these are the kinds of things that would help to get a back and forth. But if we're going to continue to judge the judges who have the courage or, in all fairness, the foolishness, to come out and speak to us publicly, we can't get anywhere, which is where you do defer back to you got to keep it shut. If you're a master of this, if you're a master of the rules, and you're a master with dialogue, communicator, like, say, Mark Goddard, you're going to get away with it. And people are going to be grateful. And they're going to be glad that they heard from you, and they're gonna be glad that you expressed it. Same, Big John gets that same respect. He's a master of the rules. He's a master communicator. He's not afraid to be wrong. He's not afraid to identify other people that are wrong. There shouldn't be a shame in that. There should not. As people, particularly decision makers, if we can come out when we got something that upon further review, we may have concluded something else, that's not a negative. It's not. It's a dialogue. It's how you learn. They got the right fighter to win the fight. Great. They had a wrong fighter winning the third round. Arguing your position for the third round while not taking in consideration the unified rule shows that you don't know the unified rules, which is a problem.